Good morning, everybody. So did you guys know an average American spends about $1,100 per year for coffee? It can be like coffee shop, their favorite coffee shop, or even their own coffee that they buy. But mostly because it's a big coffee shop. It can be for many reasons. It can be because they love going there because of the connections they make, the relationships, relationships that they have for uh, every customer, or even they're just grabbing the daily caffeine, or it's just a daily routine. I've seen customers go two times, three times, even four times a day where I work. I currently work at Dutch Bros. And today, after listening to my speech, you will be able to describe how Dutch Bros was created, how does it give to, back to communities or in organizations, and how we as employees serve to our customers. So let's start. How did it start? It started in 1991. Not a lot of people know about Dutch Bros history of how it started, so I'm going to tell you today. It started with two brothers, Trav and Dave. They were in Grand Pass, Oregon. They had a three-generation dairy farm business. Uh, but sadly, after a government regulation passed, the family had to sell all, the, all their cows. And Dane was pretty upset because he was really in charge of that uh, dairy business during, while Travis was in school. He was 21 and Travis, uh, sorry, Travis was 21 and Dane was about 32 years during when this happened. Sadly, they had to sell everything, all the cows, their business was gone. But Travis had an idea. He wanted to create a new business. He was eager to start something new. So one day they ended up getting together and they made a list of ideas of what they wanted to do. They ended up thinking that they wanted to start a business with espresso, just plain black espresso, which is just black coffee. So they gave it a try. They tried the coffee, and Dane was not pretty convinced that that was going to work and that was going to solve. He thought it was pretty gross. Travis also thought the same thing after trying espresso, just black coffee. So they thought that that wasn't a good idea. So after driving to Western Espresso there in Grand Pass. Since Travis was a college student, obviously he knew about coffee, saying up late at nights, etc. So Travis ordered two hot, large vanilla lattes. Obviously, Dane didn't have an idea what he was drinking, so he took a sip and he fell in love. He took the lid off, he and he literally flicked the froth, the foam off from the lid. He he quoted and he really did say this. This is incredible. That changed everything. So that's what they decided to do. They wanted to serve coffee in Grand Pass. After going to Seattle and a couple areas here in Washington, they got a lot of denials about coffee, um, how it started. They wanted to start something, but a lot of people denied that because they thought that wasn't going to work. So in Grand Pass, they ended up meeting. They ended up meeting Paul Leiden. He became their mentor. He ended up telling them what to do, how to do it, how to make coffees, etc. So that's how it started. Paul Layden mentored them, gave them advice, even taught them at their own dairy farm back in Grand Pass. So in 1992, in 1992, that's where it all started. They had a push cart there in downtown. Grand Pass with the big boom box. So imagine 1902 with a boom box, loud music, just them two with a small machine with a little like a house thing. I, I forgot what it was. But like a house there, just them two. So the first day they sold 35 coffees, just 35, and they made $65. So for them, that was the best day ever. For us, maybe $65 is not enough, but for them having to start out of nowhere making their coffee. $65 meant a lot to Travis and Dane. So after that, they decided that that was their business, how it, it was going to start. So after that, they ended up having a time for themselves to make goals. So they decided that their main dreams and goals was going to be have their own roasted coffee, have their own coffee shop, and have coffee shops locations in the western area of the United States, so from Washington, Oregon, California, etc. Up to this, to this day, that, those dreams that they had have been complete. But going back in 2009, Dane passed away, sadly, with um, ALS. This is a disease that the nervous system gets 
It's a nervous disease um, in the nervous system that weakens their bones. So he sadly passed away, but his legacy still continues due to his brother and son right now. So it's amazing how even though he passed away, it's still going on. It's still being, um, his dreams are being accomplished. And right now we have about 300 locations around the area and about 7,200 employees uh, working right now. So right now I'm really thankful for be working um, with this amazing company. So how do Dutch Bros give back to the community and organization? So yearly we do four um, uh, fundraisers every year. The first one is called Be Aware. This uh, f fundraising is dedicated to breast cancer awareness. So every October we sell uh, these uh, containers. I'm pretty sure you guys seen it, but they're bright pink Dutch Bros awareness, breast, breast cancer awareness. So every month that is sold, we give we donate that money to two organizations <coughs> that research and help people in need with the breast cancer. So that's pretty amazing that we're giving back to those that are. are having breast cancer, going through a tough time, so that's one. The second one is called Drink One for Dane. So this is, a, I love this one. So we dedicated one day in May. So all that money goes to an ALS organization that helps those that have the same disease that Dane did when he passed away. So it's pretty nice because we're, that day is only focused for those people that are going through a tough time, just how Dane did, and it's pretty sad that he passed away, but we're able to help those in need. So that's the second one. The third one is uh, drink, um, sorry, Buck for Kids. Buck for Kids is every dollar that you guys get a drink, it's donated to a local organization here in Walla Walla. This year we were able to donate uh, the money to children that didn't have parents. So this, this was a pretty nice opportunity for the parents to have um, money for programs for those that didn't have parents here in Walla Walla. Last year, um, the money was donated for school supplies here in Walla Walla, so this year we focus on those that didn't have any parents here in Walla Walla. The last one is during Valentine's Day. It's called Dutch Love. Every dollar from every drink is donated to a food bank here in Walla Walla. So it's pretty nice that we're able to give back to those that don't have any food here in Walla Walla. So this, these, these are four main um, organizations that and fundraisers that we do here here in Dutch Bros, not a lot of people know um, since they ask questions, oh, what are you guys doing today? What, what is this for? Where is the money going for? So all that money, we don't keep it. We give it to those that are in need, breast cancer, uh, drink from drink one for Dane, which is ALS, for those that are, are going through a rough time. Uh, but for kids, children, mostly focused for children, the school supplies or any programs, organizations here in Walla Walla. And the last one is uh, Dutch Love, which is only for the food bank here in Walla Walla. So that's really nice that we, as a company, give back to those in need because it means a lot for us. Lastly, I'll go over how we serve. So as employees, we follow our three core values, which is speed, quality, and service. These, we can't sacrifice one for another because all three go together and we try to make the best experience for our customers. I know I've seen some of you guys pass by there. It's amazing how just one cup cup of coffee can make a difference. I've seen people go by crying because a family member passed away. I've seen uh, owners of dogs going, just grabbing a cup of coffee because they're putting their dog down. There was once uh, an example of how uh, a two-year engagement was broken, uh, just broke, and they didn't get married, and the, the guy was sitting there just venting to me, crying, and it's amazing how some customers just open up just for how you doing, how are you, how's your day, and that can make a difference. Um, it's amazing how, as we as customers, we're just making coffee, we're just trying to make their day, but just having that question, how are you doing, you're able to explain it. Not a lot of people like to talk with us if, for many reasons, but it's amazing how just going there, grabbing your coffee, and making them that they're important, it's just like, wow, like, it makes a whole difference there. Um, so in conclusion, I would like to go over and just review what I just said. So how did it start? It started with two brothers and grandpas in 1991. They had a dream after their dairy farm was literally destroyed. They ended up thinking that Espresso was going to, just Black Espresso was going to do it, but... You need to wrap your speech up, please. It was going to do it, but sadly it didn't. 
how how do we get back to organizations? We give four fundraisers every year, so it's pretty amazing how we get back to the community. And lastly, how do we serve three core values: speed, quality, and service? So hopefully, you can enjoy and go get a uh, iced coffee, Rebel, or anything that you desire there. That's for us. Thank you.